All right. Hello. My name is Stephanie Gutnick, and I work for a company called Broadsign. Broadsign does digital signage software and solutions. And I'm here to talk to you a bit about what your mother never told you about digital signage today. So I started with Broadsign about a year and a half ago. I was working for a division of News Corporation and in media, advertising, sales, and I was looking for something a little bit more creative. So I started passing along my CV and I came across a job description for a marketing copywriter. It sounded right up my alley. Uh, I had never heard of Broadsign, um, nor had I heard of digital signage or did I know much about software, but uh, sure enough, I landed an interview and the evening before I did my due diligence I did some research about the company about digital signage and good thing I did because during my interview my now boss uh, Daniel Parisian the vice president of marketing and strategy at Broadsign uh, he said okay you're gonna write a press release about a product that we have that's coming out and he gave me a description and so I you know scribble down some words like software as a service digital out of home and uh, breathed a sigh of relief. That is until I started. So my mom taught me a lot of things. She taught me how to tie my shoes, paint my nails. Uh, she taught me how to make amazing muffins, but she never said a thing about the world of digital signage. And uh, that's because she doesn't come from a world of digital signage and nor did I. But uh, I learned quite quickly. I'm really lucky. Broadsign has a lot of uh, employees who have been in this industry since it was kind of born about a decade ago. And I learned very quickly. Um, the goal today to share with you a bit about these tips and tricks is not to be a digital signage 101 or a crash course. Uh, it's impossible. There's too much to learn. But what I would rather do is give you um, some tips some places to look, where to go, what to read, who to meet, uh, so that you can know where to, uh, where to search for things that will best suit your needs in the type of field that you work in. And I'm just going to find my clicker here so I can move on to the next slide. Perfect. So the key here is whoever you are, we want to stay ahead of the game. And it's very easy to go from just entering the industry to being an expert. I did it myself. Um, for those of you who, who don't know, this man on the left, that's Where's Waldo? Uh, in French, uh, his name is Charlie. But um, for any of you who have played these Where's Waldo games, you get a book and there's a big picture and uh, there's lots of activity going on, lots of things to look at, people, but the goal is to find this man in the peppermint colored sweater. Um, some people will take a look at a picture and find him right away, and others it's gonna take them a little bit longer. But uh, for me, that was kind of the experience I had learning the fundamentals of digital signage. Um, when you look at it, it can be a little bit daunting, but once you find Waldo or Charlie, or the key components of the industry, um, you can flip back to the page and know instantly where Waldo is. With that being said, the woman on the right, she might not be as noticeable, that's Carmen San Diego. There's a game called Where in the World is Carmen San Diego? And the idea is you're constantly chasing Carmen, she's on the run, and you're trying to find where she is. And I feel that every day of my job because the digital signage industry is moving so quickly um, that it can be daunting and tough to keep up on the trends. But that, what's, that's what keeps things interesting, that's what keeps my job, so I wouldn't take it any other way. Okay, so there are about five components that I'm going to share with you today about tips and tricks for you in the digital signage industry. One, um, one of the first lessons I learned at my job was that uh, it's 1080p, not 1080p. So I said that I had to write a press release in my interview about a new product. That new product is something called Broadsign Express. It is a Android-based media player and my company was launching it my third week of the job at Digital Signage Expo, which is an event that I'll talk to you about a little bit later. And so in my first week, my boss had a fabulous idea. We're going to create a video to launch the product in two weeks. And you're going to write the script for it. So I said, okay. 
Um, I met with all of the VPs. They told me what they thought should be in this video. And I wrote the script. And uh, they would chuckle when they were reading it over at the end. And uh, I realized it's because I wrote 1080p instead of the screen resolution 1080p. I then found out there's 720p, that there's 4K, that there's 8K, but it's all part of the learning curve. So when you're starting, people will say that there are seven components to digital signage. They can be broken out into three. One is deployment, which consists of hardware, installation, project management. I uh, got the full experience of that when we were trying to set up our video wall yesterday at our booth. Uh, it's it's uh, pretty interesting. The second one would be operations, which consists of software, um, training, connectivity, or internet. And the third would be media, uh, so content, advertising. You can get a great education on these seven components by taking a course called the Digital Signage Certified Expert. It's offered by the Digital Signage Experts Group. And um, you go through an online training program. You write a test at the end. It kind of feels like you're writing your driver's test over again. And then if you pass, you get a lovely certificate, like I did myself. And it kind of is a great way to bring you up to speed. Another good way to learn about digital signage and these seven components is in a book by Infocom. Um, digital signage happens to fall into chapter 11, which is I. You know, a subject that I hope nobody with their digital signage initiatives will, uh, will be dealing with other than in this book. And it talks about, once again, content, connectivity, what you need to know to have a successful network. If you uh, want something a little bit different, um, and if you have the money at your hand, you can also read uh, some of these reports. We have one by Frost and Sullivan, and one by PQ Media. Um, they both are about 150 pages each, but if you have the time and you really want an in-depth um, scope of the industry, of the media player market, the software market, the hardware market, challenges, trends, hot company watch lists, they're both a, a good idea to invest in. Another lesson, 69 is an aspect ratio and a blog. It is not uh, having anything to do with the X-rated minds of digital signage industry founders. So, once again, there's no Cliff's Notes for learning about the industry. There's not an app for that. But there are other places that you can go to, you know, get a once over and do things a little bit faster. There's a digital signs and displays for dummies. So, that's a start. That was published in 2011, so it might be a little bit out of date by now, but uh, it's available on the Scala website, and uh, it's free, free for download. You can also look at white papers. White papers are typically focused on specific topics, so if there's something in digital signage that you want to get more of an in-depth take on, you can consult one of those. Uh, I wrote one along with the help of several people at Broadsign, just last August, and we published it on our website. That's also available for download. It's called Everybody's Doing It, The Secrets to Establishing a Successful Digital Signage Network. And finally, if you prefer to get your information in you know, snippet form, combine all that, there are many places to go. Um, we have Daily Do, which is almost uh, like a bulletin, and they're typically right on top of what's going on in the industry. They have some gossip, keeps things exciting. Uh, you can also go to Digital Signage Today, Digital Signage Connection, Vespa, um, Screen Media Magazine. AdSpace Network is an interesting story. They're actually a network of screens that are in malls across the United States, and they have a blog on their website, and the blog talks about you know, things going on in the industry, and it's written by employees. So sometimes the CEO will write an article, sometimes the marketing coordinator will write something that they find interesting. And of course, Broadsign has a blog which uh, I write, and it highlights all of my findings from travels to events like these uh, across the world. They're all objective, just talks about what's going on in the industry. So, 169, the blog. Uh, this blog is written by a fellow named Dave Haynes, and uh, he's been in the industry forever. He has a very professional journalism background. He actually had a stint at the Winnipeg Free Press, 
which is the newspaper of the city that I grew up in. Um, and, you know, hometown affiliation aside, he is a great... Uh, he has a great eye, and he knows what he's talking about. The blog is a little bit more on the technical side, but he has a really great sense of humor, and if I can understand it, anybody can. So it's a good one to check out. Digital Signage Pulse. This is more of an aggregate of digital signage news collected from a vast amount of sources uh, online. It's what I wake up to in the morning, I take a look at it with my breakfast, and it's all the latest news. What I really like about uh, the interface is that the editor will pick some of his favorite stories himself and he posts them to the top. He also organizes the stories very nicely at the side, so if you want something related to content or advertising, you know where to go. And how could I speak at a FESPA show and not talk about the FESPA website? But in fact, it's actually a really great source of information. FESPA, as you know, uh, is a print association, but they acknowledge that digital signage is a really growing component. It's not a threat, it's a complement to what is going on in the print industry. And in their blog, they've started to incorporate articles about digital signage themed information. Um, and if you read it, you might even find an article written by yours truly, so. Okay, so number three. What happens in Vegas will not stay in Vegas. The biggest show uh, of the digital signage industry is called Digital Signage Expo. It's held every March, and it attracts about 6,000 people. Now, compared to a show like this, which has 14,000 overall, 2,000 people in the European Sign Expo space. That kind of seems a little bit on the smaller side, but it's really, um, it's really the place to be for specific digital signage uh, related companies. Um, and they just work as a hub. So suppliers will be there. They'll hold their third party events alongside the event. There's digital signage awards ceremony. You can get your digital signage uh, certified expert certificate. They even offer the courses in other languages. Um, so if you want to really go and do some research, I would suggest checking that out. Vegas isn't too bad either. So for the rest, events are a great place to just kind of network and meet people, um, aside from learning about what's available to you and your company. I kind of look at digital signage as the very center of one of those Venn diagrams that you would have done in probably in elementary school. Uh, print would be one of the big circles, audiovisual or AV would be another one, and digital signage kind of finds itself at the center. Uh, it's growing, but you can look at the major events as places within those circles. So if we see digital signage at the center, we have DSE or Digital Signage Expo. But there are also other events. One was just last week in London called Digital Science Media Week. Brought together lots of different people in the industry. And they had, you know, they participated in very forward-thinking conferences. Another one will happen in October in New York. There's also the DPAA Media Summit, which I will speak about the DPAA in a little bit. They bring together advertisers and agencies, and they work more on the content side of things, and they have a media summit in November in New York as well. If we take a look at the broader circles, we have audiovisual. Um, one show that many of you might know is Integrated Systems Europe, and that happens in February in Amsterdam. It's a huge show, um, and Digital Science has its own hall. So that's how much, you know, it started as a little space, and that's how much it has grown. Uh, similar to that, Probably it's, you know, brother or sister would be Infocom, again in Las Vegas, in June. Another huge show, Digital Signage also has its own hall there as well. Then if we look at print, which is a show like Vespa, we do have European Sign Expo. And there's also ISA Sign Expo. And ISA Sign Expo happens in North America. They introduced a dynamic digital hub last year and it has been growing ever since. They've been very successful, same uh, as in Europe, but it's interesting to compare the two just to see where the two continents uh, are alike and are different at their stages of adopting digital in the print environment. Skipped a slide there. Perfect. So another 
lesson or tidbit is you're going to have to pay to play. Um, associations are a great way to meet people like you, uh, to network, to learn, and um, you know the price is very much worth it. So what's interesting is last week I was in London for London Digital Media Week and I was talking to people and they have an outdoor media association but there's nothing that's dedicated solely to digital signage. Now, North America, we have outdoor associations as well, but we also, and I've taken for granted, I realize, we have um, three in particular very big associations dedicated solely to digital signage. So one is the Digital Signage Federation. They take care more of the lobbying side of things. Um, they also provide regional networking events and opportunities to learn for their, uh, you know, for their members. And then, as I said before, the DPAA. So that stands for Digital Place-Based Advertising Association. And they've really taken digital signage and brought it more to the agencies. There was a lot of education that had to be done explaining why it would be worth the investment for advertisers and media owners to invest in screens as compared to television or online. There's a lot of work that's been done and we're seeing some great success. Broadsign is a very proud member of both of those two associations that I just mentioned and uh, it's a great place to network and just be amongst people who share the same viewpoints. And finally there's Digital Screen Media Association and they pretty much do the same thing. They hold events and draw people together. Lots of focus on research and education. So those are just three that you can also check out. So finally, what your mom did tell you, a friend in need is a friend indeed. The industry of digital signage is still um, very small and in its infancy, it's booming as of the past couple of years, but uh, it's still new compared to other forms of media such as print, radio. Um, so with that being said, you'll still meet people who had to put their time and effort and work days and nights to get the industry on its feet. And they're very proud of what they've done. And they'll talk to you, even if they might be a competitor of yours. Uh, they'll speak about what they did, what they've learned, best practices, so that you can learn too. Um, in the end, I think everybody realizes that a rising tide really does raise all boats. So everybody is very willing to work together. Um, and just to share with you, the magic that I experienced with digital signage, this industry that I knew nothing about but suddenly have come to love and it's become one of my great passions, is just how powerful it is as a medium in terms of communicating with people but also you know, making an impact. Advertisers love it because they can do really creative things and uh, I'd like to just share this video with you. It's by um, a company called JC Deco. They're one of the world's, if not the world's largest media owners. For, uh, for signage. This is something that they did in the UK. I'm absolutely blown away by that.
Natalia. Be a mom! <laughs> So that was the campaign for MINI, um, and as MINI cars drove down this freeway where digital signage was placed, um, the signage was able to, people working with this campaign were able to spot the specific cars, send them tailored messages, and kind of just put a smile on their face. So it's just a nice way to start the day or end the day um, and end my presentation. So with that being said, if you have any questions, please feel free uh, to talk to me. I'm not a veteran, but I'm still more than happy to answer them. Thank you.